Woe to you, O earth and sea, for the devil sends the beast with wrath, because he knows the time is short. <laughs> To start this Vaxxer Wars critical alert on the biggest scam in medical history, we begin with the Federal Food and Drug Administration's December 11, 2020 emergency use authorization for the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for individuals age 16 and up, which was closely followed by the FDA's December 18, 2020 emergency use authorization for the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine for individuals 18 and up. These emergency use authorizations were then amended several times to bring the qualifying age groups of individuals eligible for these medical therapeutics lower and lower until finally, on June 17, 2022, they could be administered to babies as young as six months old. Next, and as a result of mutations to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, which created COVID-19 variants, such as the Delta and Omicron variants, Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 bivalent vaccines were authorized by the FDA, with the Moderna version being authorized for age 6 and up and the Pfizer version enjoying emergency use authorization for ages as low as 5 years old. These bivalent shots are referred to by the FDA as boosters. Of interest here is that these boosters were given emergency use authorization by the FDA based on a scientific study of a mere eight laboratory mice. Rest assured though, these were what they called humanized mice. Turning now to the actual language of the emergency use authorizations, we are reminded of the ancient legend of the Trojan horse of Troy, wherein was hidden an army of warriors that under cover of night and once let into the enemy camp under the guise of being a peace offering, exited the Trojan horse and proceeded to slaughter their enemy while they slept. In the case at hand, the emergency use authorizations are the Trojan horse and subsection X of part three, conditions of authorization are the warriors hidden within. Under subsection X of part three, conditions of authorization, which is a mandatory condition precedent to the validity of the emergency use authorizations, the requirements set forth in section 502A and 502N of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act must be strictly adhered to. Under section 502A of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, a drug is deemed to be misbranded if its labeling is false or misleading in any particular. And per section 502N, if an article is alleged to be misbranded because the labeling or advertising is misleading, then the extent that the labeling or advertising fails to reveal facts concerning the drug can be used as evidence of its illegal misbranding. For instance, if the labels on the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine fail to list mRNA as being its main component, then a court can use this intentional omission as proof of illegal misbranding. As illustrated here, neither the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine or the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine biolabels or packaging mention anything about mRNA being an ingredient. Therefore, as a matter of law, the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines and Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines are illegally misbranded not only under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, but also under California's Sherman Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, as well as in most other states who, like California, have statutes that mirror the Federal Act. For a complete discussion on this illegal misbranding, see California Pharmacists Violating State Law when administering COVID-19 vaccines without legal authority, part one, the cover-up, at VaxerWars.com. In summary, 
under federal law, California law, and the law of most other states, as well as standing legal precedent and scientific norms over the last century, the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines and Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines are not vaccines, regardless of what these corporations try to make you believe. This means that in addition to the failure to list mRNA as an ingredient as being evidence of misbranding, the inclusion of the word vaccine is more evidence of this legal misbranding because these products are not vaccines. As a result of this illegal misbranding of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine, the FDA emergency youth authorizations are void. A quick and simple explanation of this is that on February 4th, 2020, the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services declared that there was a COVID-19 related public health emergency and based on that emergency declaration, on March 27, 2020, the Secretary authorized the emergency use of drugs and biological products to combat this medical emergency. However, and by law, any emergency drug use authorizations would be subject to any and all of the terms included in any such authorizations. As discussed earlier, and to the issue of illegal misbranding, Emergency approval of both the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine and Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine were conditioned on the strict compliance of Section 502A and 502N of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. Therefore, Moderna's and Pfizer's failure to comply with the clear, unambiguous, and mandatory condition precedent of complying with Section 502A and 502N of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act renders the emergency use authorizations void ab initio. That is, there was never any valid emergency use authorizations for Moderna COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer Bio and Tech COVID-19 vaccines, as well as their bivalent versions. The civil legal ramifications of this is that immunity from civil liability provided by what is known as the PREP Act is not available to Moderna Inc., Pfizer Inc., and its corporate officers, or state and government agencies, hospitals, doctors, pharmacists, and any other entity or persons who participated in the administering of the illegally misbranded Moderna and Pfizer vaccines to patients who ended up being injured or killed by this illegal contraband. The easiest way to explain this is that any immunity from civil litigation would derive from the administration or use of covered countermeasures by a covered person with the covered countermeasure being a qualified pandemic or epidemic product as defined in the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act's definitions of drug, biological product, or medical device, so long as they meet the criteria stated in the emergency declaration and the emergency use authorizations. As previously explained, the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines, as well as their bivalent versions do not meet the criteria of emergency use authorizations because of their illegal misbranding. Plainly and simply, no civil immunity exists for any injuries caused by the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines, as well as their bivalent versions. No civil immunity. In a nutshell, and as for criminal culpability, any person who violates any provision of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, for instance, Section 502A's misbranding prohibition, can be imprisoned for not more than one year or fined not more than $1,000 or both. But if the violation was done with the intent to defraud or mislead, or after having been previously convicted of a prior violation, then the penalties are increased up to three years in prison or a fine of not more than $10,000 or both. Additionally, if it were deemed that the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines, or their bivalent versions were biological weapons, as some experts in the field have suggested, then the penalty could include imprisonment for life. Further, if it were deemed that the Moderna COVID-19 vaccines, Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines, or their bivalent versions fit the definition of weapons of mass destruction, and the use of them cause death, then the penalty includes death by execution. And finally, if the elements of genocidal death are met, then the punishment can include imprisonment for life or death by execution.
All of this being said, then exactly what can the regular person on the street do to fight this criminal behavior? Well, the answer is simple. It's called a citizen's arrest, and you don't have to be Clint Eastwood to make one. All it takes is a basic understanding of the citizen's arrest laws in your state, plus the desire and the will to right the legal wrongs currently being done to our society and way of life through the use of these illegally misbranded Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, which have been proven to be deadly in thousands of documented cases. The legal authority to make a citizen's arrest in California, as well as in many other states, explains that a private person may arrest another person for a crime or public offense committed or attempted in the presence, or when the person arrested has committed a felony, even if it was not done in the arrested party's presence, or when someone has committed a felony and the arrested party believes that the person they are arrested has committed it. For a lesson on how to make a citizen's arrest in California, watch California pharmacists violating state law when administering COVID-19 vaccines without legal authority. Part 4, The Citizen's Arrest, free to view on BaxterWars.com.